Happy Sunday morning, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV, and this is the first Sunday morning view queue of 2020, where I answer all of your questions about my full-time RV life. For everybody watching the Super Bowl today, enjoy it. I'm hanging out with my friends and family. We've got lasagna in the crock pot, and I'm looking forward to doing that later on today. But right now, as you can see, I am chilling in the new fifth wheel, and um, I've got all of your questions right here, so I'm gonna get right to them. Gail said, when is your TED Talk available? I'm starting with this one because a lot of you guys have asked me. I know it's a little bit confusing because I don't have the rights to post the TED Talk. It's not mine. I've been told that in two or three months it will be on the TEDx YouTube channel, but right now you can still watch it if you watch the live stream of the video that was done. I'm going to put the link below. It'll be pinned at the top of comments. You can also find it pinned at the top of my Facebook page. All of the speakers are on there. They're all really great. I come on about hour three and 49 minutes, something like that. So thank you for everybody that supported me in that. It was a great experience. And I wanna give a shout out actually to, I'm gonna call her JJ, because a lady came up to me at the TED Talk. I'm gonna get the name wrong, <laughs> so I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna say your initials are JJ, but she drove from South Carolina to see me do the TED Talk. And I wish I'd had another chance to talk to you afterwards, but thank you for that support. And then I actually got a message from somebody that I can't find now. And um, she asked me if the necklace I was wearing in the TED Talk is the same necklace that I have on my refrigerator. Now, I'm wondering if that person was also in the audience because you couldn't actually see the necklace from far away, which is how it was shot. And um, I don't wear jewelry. But I decided to wear that one because this is a necklace that I actually got while I was taking care of my sister in hospice. If you guys watch the TED Talk, you'll hear all about that. But, um, you know, I really felt like a caged bird then. And my family actually calls me Bird. It's my nickname. So um, this one, this necklace is a bird set free. And um, I wanted to wear it for my sister while I was doing the TED Talk. But normally it's on my refrigerator. So thank you for noticing that. And thank you for all of your kind comments and support with that. That was a huge deal and I had a great time. I would absolutely do one again. The link is below if you want to check it out. Okay, the next thing I wanted to say really quick is thank you for all your support on the book. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my last book came out um, a few weeks ago. It's called Work From Home While You Roam. The Ultimate Guide to Jobs That Can Be Done From Anywhere. This was a labor of love, you guys, because I get so many emails from people saying that they're having trouble making a living on the road or they want to hit the road, but they don't know how to make a living. And um, I went down some research rabbit holes for this one. But uh, a few people bought it on pre-order, and the minute it came out, it actually had a formatting error inside of it where some of you will see these little blue links that look like this. And um, we were kind of mortified because those are our internal editing marks. <laughs> so if you go to the end of the book and you see something that says like RB 1074, that was my like 1074th editing mark and there were other people editing it as well. That has since been rectified by Amazon. And if you want to get those removed, <laughs> because they're not supposed to be there, you can go over to your device management in Amazon, just like I show here. You can see some books here that have updates. That's what it looks like. And by the way, for anybody else that has my last book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, you guys know that's a living book. And I update it every quarter. And people have asked me how to update that one. Same thing. You just go in there and look to see if there's an update. If there is, you update it. Or you can change your settings to have it done automatically. And finally, on the housekeeping... Some of you savvy viewers noticed that the cover for that last book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, changed. Yes, I found this great cover designer that I found while I was researching my book. I found him in one of the freelancing sites I was um, working on. He did both book covers, and um, aren't they great? I love them both, and um, I really appreciate that guy. Okay, let's get on to some other questions about the fifth wheel. You guys know that I did a follow-up video, but I didn't have a chance to answer everything because it was just too long. Pacific Northwest said, do you get paid by Grand Design to give this rig a trial? And I got this a few times. Look, you guys, now, if I were getting paid um, or sponsored by some kind of a rig, I would absolutely disclose it to you. And I'm not against it. <laughs> Grand Design, if you're listening, I'd be happy to try out a rig for you because I'm a big fan now. But no, I um, 
bought this rig for myself because I loved it. Okay, a similar question, El Puma said, am I crazy to think your home is a big tax write-off because it's used for business? This is another question I get a lot, and guys, I wish I could write it off, but my accountant says that, you know, if you use something for a business purpose, you can write it off. This is also my house, and, you know, some of you, if you've been self-employed, you know you can write off a certain percentage of your space that is used for business, but in an RV, it's hard to quantify that, and it isn't worth it. So, no, I don't write off my living space at all. No, it's just my house. Okay, another question I got a lot that I forgot to address on Wednesday is if I can get to living space in this fifth wheel with the slides in. I'm going to show you guys the hookup process, unhooking, um, the slides going in and out, my driving lessons that are coming up, everything. But um, yes, I can get to part of my living space while the slides are in. That's another reason I chose this grand design. So like I said in the tour, it's like a Harry Potter magic bus. And um, it like it folds down into a much smaller space than you think it would to go down the road. But with a lot of fifth wheels, you can't even get inside unless you open the slides. With this one, you open the door, you can get to the right side of the refrigerator, not the left side. You can get up the stairs to the whole bathroom. And there's a slide in the bedroom, but I can still get to the whole bed. I just don't have a walkway in front of it. I just have to crawl up on the bed. So yeah, I can still go to... Walmarts or rest areas, if I can find the room in a rest area, um, truck stops and not have to put my slide out, which they don't like you to do. I know some people have to do it, not hating on you, but um, it makes it more of a concern that someone's going to clip you. So no, I get to use my rig with the slides in when I'm in transit, which is great. Okay, I also had a lot of questions about the cat and how the cat is doing. So Susie said, Someone in the comments asked about transferring your cat in the truck. Can't your cat just stay in the fifth wheel while traveling? That's what I would do. Easier on you and him and probably safer for you both. Well, you know what, Susie? I'll be honest. I asked the same question because in my last rig, the cat would be up front with me while I was driving. You guys have seen him riding on my lap or on the dashboard sleeping. But most of the time he was cuddled up back in bed. As soon as the engine came on, he would go to sleep. And so I thought, well, in the fifth wheel, it would be the same. It would just be easier on him. But I was told, no, absolutely not. You're not supposed to do that. And after I got in here and started working the slides and seeing all the space, um, I agree with that because especially if the cat's scared, he could go into some space and I wouldn't know he was back there. So let's say he was back here and he got behind the slide and I opened the slide. I could crush him. And I don't want to do that. The good news is that my cat is a champ for all you guys out there that have a cat that just goes nuts when you put it in the car like to go to the vet. My boy hated going to the vet. He was that dude. He would try and claw me and peel my skin off if I tried to take him in a car. That ended in about three days <laughs> once I got in the RV. Now, it's going to be different for everybody, of course. But I was really surprised how quickly he acclimated and... You know, it's been two or three years now that he's been doing this with me, so he's used to driving, the engine starting, us going down the road. And also, when I would go home to visit Doug or my parents, he would come with me into their houses. And he just got really docile, you know, even being carried in and out of the houses and and then living in those houses for a couple days if I was staying. So now I take him into the truck, and honestly... I can carry him right to the truck. I use a carrier, but I don't even have to. He is not scared. And the minute I put him into the truck, he is very calm. And he just actually sits in between the two seats like some kind of a sphinx in that truck and just wants to go down the road. There is a litter box also in the truck and food and water. And so that's what I do. Um, and then once I get set up, I go back out to the truck and get him. That's how I feel better doing it. But it's a good question. I thought the same thing. And then I got a couple of questions about the cat's paw. After I did Wednesday's video, you guys could see him up behind me, and he was sitting like this with his paw up, um, kind of like a hunting dog. Well, he had an injury to his paw when he was a little tiny kitten, and um, he's done that since he was a baby, and there's nothing that can be done about it. It's nerve damage. So it wasn't a bigger deal when he was younger, but, um, you know, as he's gotten older, he has a little bit of arthritis, and so I actually put CBD oil into his ear, um, I don't drop it in, you guys. I put a little lotion inside the skin in his ear, 
which is what my vet told me to do because it's a more venous area if anyone has that problem. I only do it every two or three months, um, only when it looks like it's really bothering him, but then he actually stands on it for about a week. And then he starts to lift it up again. It's when he starts to shake it and bite it that I give him the oil. But I know I worry about it as he gets older. It bothers him more. But that's the deal. Yes, he has an injury, but it's nerve damage. So nothing I can do about it. I wish it was just a thorn or something I could pull out, but it's not. And Goga Jen said, do you have a link to the Cruise Don't Lose video? I mentioned that I did a bunch of research for that video that shows you guys how to find the best price when you buy or sell an RV. I'm talking like dealer costs, depreciation, how to take it all into consideration. The actual title of the video was RVs are expensive. I apologize. The thumbnail looked like that. And that's why I was calling it Cruise Don't Lose. So go back and look for that. I'll link that below also. But if you guys have not subscribed to my blog yet at creativityrv.com, please jump over there and subscribe. You just go on the right-hand side or in the, the top bar, you can subscribe because then there are subscriber-only resources on my blog, and one of them is all of the stuff you need to get that price information. So it's over there as well. Okay, I'm gonna move on to some other great questions I got just about RV life. Four Posh Ponies said, do you still have things in storage, or did you completely downsize to fit into your living quarters? I am still selling stuff. Oh my gosh, I know exactly what you're going through. So, Here's the thing. I did not get rid of everything. I got rid of mostly everything. There are a few items that I have in bins at my parents' house. And um, I was actually really surprised after I was on the road about six months, I really rethought what I needed and what I didn't need because what I thought and what was true were two different things. <laughs> there were things I thought I needed I didn't need. And so every six months, I kind of go through the whole house in here. And if there's something in here I haven't used in six months. It's got to go. I don't want to use it the weight, and I don't want it to take up any room. And, you know, I was just saying this to somebody else this morning. I think when you're getting ready to hit the road, for me, it was good to make three piles. Um, the stuff that I absolutely had to have with me and stuff that I could get rid of, sell or donate, and then things that I wanted to store. And that worked for me, the three-pile method. I will tell you that I've interviewed some other nomads. Um, one in particular, I remember, but I've had a few people say something like this. But one lady said that she had her grandmother's china. And she had inherited the china. And so she was paying like 80 bucks a month for a storage unit just because she didn't feel right selling the china or donating the china, even though she had no family that would want it when she died. And so she had to really come to terms after a couple of years looking at that bill. She had spent a lot of money, more than the item was worth, except for that she just didn't feel right selling it. So you got to do what's right for you. I know other people that have items like that in their rig because they just can't get rid of it, but they don't want to pay for storage. So everyone's going to be individual. I would just say um, it's going to change. <laughs> it's going to change a little bit what you need and what you don't need it. It takes some time. Um, but yeah, I still have some stuff in storage. And um, I'm, I'm lucky that I have family that can store a couple of things for me. Okay, moving on. Raccoon Sister said, How long did it take you to adjust to the lifestyle? I've heard others say they felt homeless at first. Was this your experience? No. <laughs> no, I've never felt homeless. Um, you know, in my book, the first book, and um, way back in my videos, I talked to you guys about something called the expatriate scale, which is a sociological study about how becoming an expatriate changes you emotionally. And I'm going to mention it again because at first what I find is true for a lot of people is, you know, like this is your happiness level, and then you start to do something new, and the excitement makes your happiness actually go up. And then it actually dives. And around month six, you are less happy than you were when you started because that's when stuff gets real, and you realize you're, you know, getting hurt or your camping spot didn't work out or um, you can't figure out how to work stuff and it starts to feel overwhelming and you get tired. But then after six months, it actually goes back up and you end up being as happy as you were before. The biggest change for me was that I left my crappy job and that made me a lot happier. I didn't feel homeless, but I will tell you this, if you're used to 
working eight hours and then being off eight hours and sleeping eight hours, you know, or something like that, that gives you a structure that you don't have when you get on the road. And especially if you're a boondocker and if you're a solo boondocker, if you go out to a space for a certain amount of time, there's nothing that tells you when to wake up, when to go to sleep, when to work, when to eat, and you can start to feel like you're floating a little bit. That is what I experience more than feeling homeless, but everybody is going to be different. I hope that helps. It's a change. I mean, but really, this is just a house that I'm in. It's just a mobile house. So no, I do not feel homeless. Okay, moving on to more RV questions. Mark said, this is such a good one, Mark. How is it for you to lift the new propane tanks in your rig? My wife and I are thinking of getting a fifth wheel, but she can't lift the tanks. Yeah, listen, my last two rigs, I had a propane fill tank, which means I had to drive up to a propane service and actually have somebody fill the tank, like with a hose. The fifth wheel has two 30-gallon propane tanks that are removable. And I was like, oh, that's going to be so nice. I can just run into town and get them filled. Well, I would still have to go to a propane fill place, but what I found was I could not lift them. I mean, I could lift a full one up onto like a milk crate and then lift it up inside, but I was going to ding the paint. Forget about it. So what I decided to do was um, put those 30-gallon tanks into storage at my parents' house. It's in their garage. And um, switch out for some 20-gallon tanks, the little ones that you can put on a barbecue, you know, swap out at the dollar store, whatever. It's just a little bit less, but those I can lift, and then I keep a spare one um, with me, and they hook up just like the other ones do. So if your wife has a problem, or if anybody has a problem lifting the 30-gallon tanks, I use the 20s. They work just fine. Ariane 310 says, were you nervous about making the transition to full-time RV life? Now that it's getting closer, my husband and I are excited, but we're also a bit nervous about the big transition. Um, no. <laughs> I wasn't nervous. You know, I was nervous when I quit my job. I wanted to make sure it was the right decision. And I was nervous when I told my friends and family because I knew they were going to think I was nuts. But actually getting in behind the wheel and driving towards that life, I was not nervous, not one little bit, because I knew it was the right decision for me. I know everybody is going to be different. I would say I was excited, which is a similar feeling, but no, I wasn't nervous. Okay, now you guys... A lady on my tour video left the most beautiful comment, and normally I don't just read comments, I, I answer questions in this video, but I just found this one so heartwarming and so beautiful, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, this is from Sandy J, and it's on the tour video. Beautiful Rig Robin, I've been enjoying your videos for the past two years. While I don't know you, just observing from a production standpoint, you have worked your ass off and so deserve this. Okay, here's the pretty part. My husband and I lived full-time in a Class C, then two different Class A's for 10 years. The only reason we stopped full-timing was because we were getting old enough that it was becoming more work than fun. Nevertheless, I will never regret selling our house and belongings and living a nomadic lifestyle. My husband has since died, and I now live on a small lake in a small cabin. Those years changed forever how we valued people and things. You are making memories of people and places you will never regret. No matter what choices you make in the future, happy travels, dear one. Isn't that beautiful? That, I mean, that just sums it up. I just wanted to read it. Thank you again for such a beautiful comment. I appreciated that, and I hope other people um, are helped by that comment, too. Really, really kind of you. Okay, and the final question of the First View Q of 2020 is from Skinny Puppy. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Well, I'm not necessarily a New Year's resolution person, but I do rethink my life, and I've been rethinking my life, as I always do. But if you watch the TED Talk, you saw me say that um, I work too much. And um, I do that because my time is my own now, and I've gone a little bit overboard because I have the freedom to do the work that I want to do now, but um, I don't have... Balance. I'm not very good at the balance. <laughs> so, like I've said before, wherever you go, there you are. And I brought this girl named Robin to the woods with me. And, um, you know, Robin has always kind of been like that. So, I either totally relax or I totally work. And that is not um, what I'm going for in my nomadic life. And this kind of a life lets us adjust 
um, pretty easily. Like I said in the um, Wednesday video, the name of my new rig is Punxsutawney Phil. Actually, the fifth wheel is Punxsutawney and the truck is Phil. Um, you know, which is a reference to Groundhog Day, because Bill Murray was stuck in the town Punxsutawney, and he woke up in the same place every day, but he had a chance to redo his life, to reinvent who he was. And that's how I see this fifth wheel. Because every day I'm going to wake up in this great space, but every day I have a chance to reinvent who I am and how I'm going to live my life. And um, I named it that because I wanted to remind myself that. So my resolution this year is to find more balance. <laughs> and that's it. Um, I still love everything I'm doing. I have great projects coming up, but um, I also want to relax a little bit more and enjoy my travels a little bit more. So thanks, you guys, for all the great questions. If you have a question for the next VQ, which will be in two weeks, please put it in the comments below, and I will pick the questions for that video from this. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Enjoy your Sunday. Hope to see you on the road or just out there traveling soon. Until then, everybody have happy travels and be free.